Hi, I'm Pam Damore, the Decorating Diva, and today I would like to show you 10 steps to a perfect pillow. Um, I'm going to start out with a fabric that comes in a kit because sometimes it's just easier if the fabric's already picked out for you. And this is a panel that was really just designed to uh, make three pillows. As you can see, it's just got three motifs that are laid out, and it also comes with some black fabric. I actually used a beige so that it would show better on camera, but I wanted to show you how I took the fabric. I took this part right here, isolated and centered that here. This part right here came from this part of the fabric, and this part, the last section, I used for this side. So it's actually a double-sided pillow, okay? So to start out with, we want to center the pattern. So what I did was I used um, a pillow template, and this has, it's hard to see with this black on black here, but there's a center motif, and then I was able to mark out the corners. Now for a 16 inch pillow, you want to cut a 17 inch square. After I cut out, after I cut out the square, then what I do is I mark the corners for the dog ears. Now the dog ears are when the pillow does this little curvy thing like this, whoop, and that's not desirable in a custom pillow. What you want to do is you want to taper the corners so the pillow looks more square. So what you would do is you would take a square like this, and using this template that I have here on the table, we would taper the corners. So you can see this one has a more gentle curve. But if you notice, this edge right here is still straight. I curved this side and this side and this side, but I left this straight because this is the edge that I'm going to put the zipper in. So it doesn't matter if that edge is a little dog-eared because it sits on this edge anyway. And so I just do these three sides. It's easier to put the zipper in a straight edge than it is a slightly curved edge. Okay, so that's how we do the cutting. That was uh, step number two was, point, was tapering the pillows. The third one, third step to a perfect pillow is adding the welt cord. So I've got the welt cord about three quarters of the way sewn here. I'm just going to thread the machine here. And I'm going to sew on the rest of this welt cord. I'm using a double welt cord foot. You could use a single welt cord foot or you could even use a, a zipper foot, whichever works best for you. And I'm going to stop about a half inch before the corner. I've snipped for my turn. I'm going to turn, take my stiletto, push the cord back into the corner, push the cord back into the corner here, and push. You don't want to pull the corner because that's when you get the rounded corners. You want to push the cord back into the corner. Now to do the splice, I'm going to trim this off at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to snip. I'm going to snip this so that we have about a two-inch overlap. Rip out the stitching. Oh, and this is step. Just so you know, Michael Welch, and this is step number five. Nope. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a regular welt cord. Step number three. Okay. It's a good thing I have my notes so I can follow myself along here. I'm going to fold this back onto itself. Take the cord. Cut it to match. Bring those edges together. And then holding it with my stiletto. There we are. And that is the finishing of the welt cord. Our next step is the banding. I'm gonna, I have my fabric folded over. I'm gonna fold it onto itself. We're going to open this. To look here. We're going to open this side right here. I'm going to make sure I open the right side, and then I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to draw a check mark right on that crease. So you need to use a ruler that's got a 45 degree angle line that goes to the corner of the ruler. So you lay the ruler with the 45 degree angle line right on that crease, and then you draw what I call a backwards check mark. Now, if any of you out there are right-handed, it's a regular check mark. For, for most of us lefties, it's a backwards check mark. So there's the check mark. Do you see that? I'm gonna start sewing here on the fold. I'm gonna turn and pivot and turn that angle. Now 
I want to make sure my folds are lined up. I start down just a little bit down below. And then I'm going to reverse. And then forward. Oh, I had my machine to shut off on reverse. That was not a setting I needed for this, so it's okay. I'm just going to continue to sew. Pivot. Turn. Now, we're going to clip, clip, clip those thread tails, snip these ends. Now, this is where everybody freaks out, okay? So, I'm warning you ahead of time. I will go to the iron, and I press this right on my finger, like that. Now, I may be cute, but I'm not stupid. If it gets hot, I can take the iron away. But I press like that. The reason why I finger press it is if I pressed it down on the table, I'd put a reverse crease in there, and I don't want to do that. So I'm just pressing. Careful not to burn myself. I'm going to turn it right side out. And now we have another beautiful miter corner for our trim here. Okay, our next step is the micro trim. And the micro trim is a smaller welt cord and it's made just like our other welt cord. So what you would do is you would insert this and as you sew the banding down, you would catch the micro cord right in there. The center piece right here, I use my, my pillow template um, that I use and I put it on point so that it would center that flower. So what we would do is I would frame, finish my frame the frame is at 10 inches, this is at nine inches, okay? And then I would have my cord and I would splice it the same way and that would all be top stitched right inside so it would look like that, okay? Now, if you're worried about the stitching line showing, just use some invisible thread, that's what I do. Okay, so the next step are the pleats. This is where everybody gets excited because pleats tend to be pretty tricky. Well. I use a tape and the tape has sequence numbers on it. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just show you how easy it is to, to do this. You're going to take the number three on this tape and line it up to the number one. Now you're saying to yourself, self, how did I know that? Well, it comes in the directions that are in the package. So there you are. Follow the three up to the number one. Follow the three up to the number one. And then of course, you would take the tape off once you were finished. It's like painter's tape. It's not, very, it's not super sticky. It just comes off. And then the trim is ready to be sewn onto the pillow. So here I've got the trim sewn onto the pillow. I'm gonna finish sewing it on and show you how to turn the corners. When I get to the corners, sometimes it's a little bit thick there, so what I might want to do is just rip some of the stitching out and then cluster the fold so it'll turn nicely. So I'll just cluster a little fold there. Pivot. And this machine is so nice because it adjusts over the extra weight. It just flows right over this extra thickness. I'm gonna fold this over onto itself like that. And then just sew. And now our next step is the zipper. I'm gonna put a different foot on here. I'm gonna switch back to the double welting foot. I can use that or the zipper foot, but the double welting foot works really good for putting on a zipper. I'm gonna sew each side on like this. Yes, and if you remember, I didn't taper the bottom edge of the pillow. I left it straight for that very reason. And because the welt cord's is foot is still on there, I can sew and hug this right up to the edge. Now, just need to put the slide on. 
and that's done by lining up the pillow edges. I got a little extra zipper tape here. I'm just going to trim that off. We're going to line up our pillow edges. And then all we need to do next to finish the pillow is to sew. We sew these three sides together. We then take it over to our serger. And I'll show you on my finished sample. I can find the zipper. Here we are. We take it over to the serger and we run it through the serger and that gives it a nice finished edge. And that's step number nine. Now the tenth step. This is a little secret a friend of mine shared with me. I put a little stuffing in each corner. And if you put the stuffing in each corner of the pillow, when you put your pillow form in, you see, there's stuffing sewn into each corner. That way the corners always stay puffy. So when you're making your pillow, let's go over those 10 steps one more time. We center the pattern. We taper the corners. We add the welt cord, the banding, the micro welt, the pleats, the zipper. We sew around the edge. We do the serging in the corners. Those are your 10 steps to a perfect pillow.